Hello everyone, so let's try a couple different examples in this video. Um, I hope you followed the previous part when we explored some very basic shapes and in this part I just want to start introducing some a little bit more complex nodes and you know just a little bit complex ideas on how to create those uh, weird sci-fi patterns. Okay, so I'm gonna start with um, shape. Mm, actually I'm gonna start with square and I'm gonna run it through tile sampler I need to change it to pattern input one and to be honest you can use you know those patterns but I like to have an additional control in this uh, shape node so I'm gonna change it to pattern input I'm probably gonna reduce the um, amount to 8 by 8 I'm gonna scale random increase the scale a little bit and position random as well and I want to go back to sorry go down to where the color is and I'm looking for uh, that one okay so we've got this sort of pattern and now we're gonna run it through edge detect I'm gonna invert it and as you can see, we got this as our first pattern. Okay, the next thing what we could do, and what I usually do, you could get basically a double line. Uh, but you have to control the edge width with, the, with both of those. So for example, I'm gonna go back to this one and I'm just gonna increase the uh, edge width. So in that one, if I'm gonna shrink it down to zero, basically, I'll get a, uh, a double edge. Okay, also you can, in, you know, increase the ra uh, edge random roundness <laughs> just a little bit to get some of those area covered, okay? So now you can basically go to uh, back to this one while having this, uh, the last one in the preview. And now you can increase the edge width. So as you can see, what's gonna happen you're gonna have a various uh, patterns there okay so that's with the square let's do the same thing but let's do it with a polygon uh, with three sizes um, so I'm gonna run it through tile sampler again to the pattern input one change it to 8 by 8 but now maybe let's try introducing a little bit more randomness to it so position random maybe with offset 0.5 as well scale random uh, let's maybe do the rotation random as well maybe um, maybe let's keep it let's look for the um, symmetry random I mean, you can try with this, but it's just gonna, I feel it feels like it's gonna give us a little bit, you know, too much random, and I want this to be uh, some sort of um, pattern without too much random. Obviously, we can always go back and tweak those, but for now, let's just keep going. Right, okay, where is the symmetry? There is symmetry random. Okay, now the same thing, so I'm just gonna copy paste those two edge detect and we got you know a little bit weird or different shapes if you like and now we can always go back to the tile sampler and maybe try to tweak additional parameters if you if we want like uh, rotation random um, scale random as well as you can see we're getting various different patterns which is really cool also I'm gonna go to the edge detect and play with this uh, edge roundness as well and edge width in the previous one okay so the next idea I wanna hold on a second let me shrink this a little bit okay so the next idea is I wanna basically uh, mask some of the elements on this texture 
Okay, so I'm gonna run it through Blend. Okay, I'm gonna add a parallel noise as well. And I wanna run it through Histogram Scan. And in Histogram Scan, I just wanna create like very contrast, contrasty image, something like this. But now I'm gonna reduce the scale on the parallel noise. So we got this. And I wanna blend it and blend this with, let me copy paste those two. And in here, all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna increase the size of the edge with just a little bit. Run it through here and this as an alpha. So as you can see, some of the lines are very uh, thin and the other ones are actually thicker. So, you know, just another pattern that you might find useful. Now the best thing is you can go back to the polygon, for example, and you can create really some crazy patterns with this, just by increasing or just moving the sliders. So again, those are very abstract and very uh, sci-fi, I would say, uh, but you can use them for maybe some sort of barriers or, you know, just really anything that you want but the point of this is to expose you to the tools and you know various stuff that you can create with it so hopefully you can uh, actually mm, create something that you find useful or something that your project might require okay so let's you know keep tweaking the settings see what we could get and as you can see it's just you know very random shapes Okay, so those are the two basic ideas, very basic, I would say. So now maybe let's try to um, explore this a little bit further, how to create like a, maybe a bit more rounded shapes. So I'm gonna um, take Polygon and I'm gonna actually copy paste this graph and run it through here. But in the tile sampler this time, I'm actually gonna go down where is the color random. And basically create something like uh, this. So I think this is, uh, you know, something that looks a lot more sci-fi than in the previous example. And the cool thing is you can click on the parallel noise and, you know, manipulate this disorder slider and to get a little bit uh, variation uh, there as well. Mm, what else we could do? Right, let's maybe take this tile sampler with the uh, whoops with the hexagon hexagonal shape. But this time, let's maybe before we plug it in, let's maybe blend it and put it into subtract. Let's just reconnect it. But in this tile sampler, hold on a second, let me double click on this blend node so we can actually see what we're doing. And then click once on the tile sampler and go to the position random and just change those settings. You can also play with the, with the scale, I think, which is here. random as well so you can basically decide how much and you actually want to subtract uh, from the other shape and now maybe let's get rid of the color random node and adjust the scale to make it uh, you know a lot more smaller so we could get those kind of shapes um, so those are very and it, it reminds me of actually hexagonals. Obviously, this is built from like hexagonals, though, so it makes sense. But um, maybe increasing the rotation could add a little bit more roundness to it. Okay. And now we could, you know, go to this edge detect, and we can adjust the uh, the edges to create a different variance essentially okay so we already got a couple variations 
And the next thing, let's maybe try to create something that looks like a, or reminds a little bit of the circuit board, okay? So I'm gonna start with shape. I'm gonna run it through tile sampler again. And I'm gonna replug it into the pattern one. And for the amount, let's maybe go with eight by eight. And position random. Um, I wonder if we could actually do 45 degrees on some of them. Or maybe let's mix the pattern. So I'm just gonna take this shape again. Uh, sorry, copy paste and plug it into the uh, pattern input two. So we can mix two patterns. So in here you can find there's a pattern input number. So I'm gonna put it into two. This uh, made this available and now I'm gonna plug this one in. But in here I'm just gonna change maybe size to four and I'm gonna rotate it 45 degree. And maybe scale it down a little bit. Okay, okay so we got a mixture of those two shapes basically. Uh, so I'm gonna increase the scale a little bit. So now let's try to run it through edge detect, invert it. And as you can see, we're kind of getting some weird shapes, like straight lines and, you know, mixture basically of those two. And now maybe let's go and tweak the scale a little bit and the randomness as well. Okay, I'm going to drag this pattern in, reduce the amount to something like 20 maybe. Or even more, maybe 40. I'm going to reduce the smoothness and X amount to 2. Get rid of that one as well, just in case. I want to run it through histogram scan. So I could get something like this. And now maybe let's get rid of uh, histogram scan from the edge. So I'm going to set it to subtract basically, and we're going to get uh, those kind of shapes. If you play with the opacity, you can actually see what you're uh, getting rid of, but that's the basic idea. Okay, now let's run through another edge detect. So we could get those and another one. So we essentially get, uh, could get the double lines. And now we could just use uh, what we learned in the previous example. So blend it with parallel noise. And in here, uh, let's maybe pick, um, actually maybe let's pick something like this again, without any smoothness uh, with histogram scan. Just so we could get those uh, straight line shapes and use this as an alpha. So as you can see, on for some examples it might work. I'm not sure if it does work for this one, unless we could run it through transformation and maybe in transformation, let's rotate it 45 degree. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it still works. So I'm just gonna go back to the parallel noise and with histogram scan. So high contrast, kind of 15 on scale on the paneling noise and this will be our alpha. So you can see we kind of get this uh, very random distribution. And now we can increase the size of those what we could probably do is to copy paste this as well, increase the edge width on that one. Not too much, just a little bit. Hold on a sec. Okay, double click. Okay, just a little bit. And now we can blend those two. 
copy paste our Berlin noise, plug this as an alpha, but with a different disorder, and plug this one right here. So as you can see, those ones got already like a different width, and plus we're mixing this with some other shape as well. And we can also blur it, not too much, just a little bit, and then mix it back in to this one. And now if we run it through gradient, we could get some uh, colors. And now obviously you might want to go back and work on your distribution of those uh, two mm, shapes. So maybe you want to increase the Y amount or maybe X amount and as you can see it kind of gives us a different result. Which is ideally what we want. So I think those are very, very abstract shapes. And to be honest, I have no idea if you actually gonna use those, uh, but maybe you will find a use for some of them. Okay, but hopefully you'll learn a little bit about the edge detect and basically how to use it to get those double lines and maybe some other bits as well. Okay. Alright, thank, so thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.